The next area I'm going to talk about is this left toolbar over here. And we often call this the left toolbar or the object toolbar. And we call this the object toolbar because this is where we can create objects in our scene. These are all the objects that we can create inside of our scene. So the first button at the top is the water button. If I click on it, I'll create water in my scene. If I press and hold down the left mouse button, the button actually folds out, which allows me to create several other types of objects, such as water, a ground plane, um, add a cloud layer, I can add rain, or I can add snow. The next button underneath that is the primitives. If I press and hold down the left mouse button, this, will, this button also folds out. And there's several different types of, pr of primitives. And primitives are basically g are mathematically pure objects. So we have a circle, a sphere, a cylinder, a cube, pyramid, a clone, torus, plane. And we can also add an alpha plane. The next one is text. And text allows us to create text in our scene. And this is actually 3D text. The next one is standard height field terrain. So if I press and hold down the left mouse button, we see that there are three different types of terrain actually. There's standard height field terrain, there's a procedural terrain, and then there's load procedural terrain presets. The next button down is plant slash load plant species. Now you notice that this button is a little bit different from the button before. The button before had a little arrow on it indicating that it folds out. This one indicates that it is a double action button, meaning that if I left click, I will load the default plant. If I right click, I will open the plant library and it will allow me to select a plant. And as soon as I select a plant, that plant becomes the default plant, which means every time that I left click on this plant button, that is the plant that will load. The next button down is the rock button. This is very similar to the plant button. There's different types of rocks that you can load. Left clicking will load the default selected rock. Right clicking will allow you to change that default selected rock. The next one is MetaClouds, and this works very similarly to very similar to the plant and the rock button. It is a double action button. You can left click or right click. And this allows you to load clouds. The next one is planets. Nothing special about this. You just click on it and a planet is loaded. The next button down is called splines, and splines is basically a 3D line. This is used for ecosystem effects, terrain effects, roads, and object creation. The next one down is particle systems. This will load a preset particle system. We will rarely use this button as there are more effective ways of creating particle systems with more control. The next button down is particle effector. This will load an object which will affect the movement of the particles. The next button down is load object or save objects. And you notice that this one does have a double action button so it's very similar to our plants, rocks, and clouds. We can see that left clicking will load an object and right clicking will save an object. By the way our particle effector has two different types. We have particle effector, and we have a directional ventilator. The next button down is light source. Left clicking creates a light source. Right clicking allows you to choose from six different types of light sources. So if I right click we can see that there are six different types of light sources to choose from. The next button down is group objects or ungroup objects. And this button allows you to group objects as if they were one, and then the fold-out menu will allow you to ungroup objects. And right now it's grayed out because we don't have more than one object selected, we just only have our C selected. The next button down is Boolean Difference. This button allows you to combine simple objects into complex, uh, complex objects using Boolean operations. The next button down allows you to create a metal blob object. Metal blob objects blend together the shapes of different primitives which are part of a group. Hyperblob is a hypertextured metablob baked at render time, removing any parts of the hypertexture, disconnecting them from the main object. Baking means the information is stored into the texture of 
that object. The last button down here is called Drop Object. And if we right click on it, we have the option to do a Smart Drop Object. Created imported objects can be dropped to the ground by left clicking. Right clicking drops the object and lays it onto the ground. So this allows you to, instead of having to manually place an object to the terrain, you can actually just click this, select the object and click this button. And the first object that it hits, it may be a tree, it may be a bush or a shrub or a grass, that is the object that it will land on. And if you click the button again, it will look for the next object underneath that. This is a pretty handy, useful button to have in an application like this.